Hi everybody, this is Mike. In this video, I'm going to show you seven ways to learn how to think in Spanish. Hola a todos, soy Miguel. En este video les voy a enseñar siete maneras para aprender a pensar en español. Before I give you the seven ways to learn how to think in Spanish, I have to explain how your brain works from the linguistic perspective. So, let's start with a basic example. If I say the word cat, what happens in your mind? Most likely, there will be an image of a cat. You will think of a cat. So if I say cat, perhaps it's a white cat, a black cat, a stray cat, a big cat, a fat cat. I don't know. It depends on your experience with cats. So let's say if I say cat, the first idea that comes to my mind is a black cat. Is that the same cat you're thinking of right now? Most likely not. And as I told you before, it depends on your personal experience with cats and the association that you have in your mind of the word cat with that idea. That's something that you learned when you were a child. As you were growing and learning the, the, your language and being exposed to the language, your brain associated the label cat with your experience, with the concept, with the image, with the idea of the cat. But what happens if I say the word, let's say, sombrero? If I say sombrero and you don't know anything of Spanish, you, you're going to ask me, what's sombrero? What does sombrero mean? And I'm going to say, sombrero means hat. When I said hat, what happened in your mind? I, I, most likely, the, there was an image of a, of a hat. But that didn't happen when I said sombrero. So... When I use the labels in your, native, uh, in your native language, the ideas and the concepts will be linked to that, to that uh, label. So I say, I say cat, a cat comes to your mind. I say hat, a hat comes to your mind. But if I say gato and you don't know Spanish, maybe you're going to say, well, I don't know what's gato. Same thing with the, with the, word, with the word sombrero. And same thing happens with any word Uh, in a different language than yours or than ours. If I say, um, you're going to say, what the heck is that? That's something in Japanese. Same thing if I say something in French or in Russian, German, anyways. Uh, the thing is that we think in our language because when we grew, as we grew, we were linking our brains, we're linking all our experience, the concepts, the ideas, with labels in our language. What is what happens when we learn a second language? Usually, when we're learning a second language, we start associating labels with our labels and then understanding the idea. And that's how brain works when it comes to learning a second language. Let's say I'm going to learn the word sombrero. So, I say the word is sombrero. And you're going to ask, what's sombrero? What does sombrero mean? What does sombrero mean? I'm sorry. So I have sombrero and I say sombrero means hat. Immediately, when I say sombrero means hat, the idea comes to your mind. Immediately, your brain comes with the idea. And the same way, if you're going to say sombrero in Spanish, you first need to think in, the, in, in English. You need to think of the word hat. And then you're going to say, a hat in, in, in Spanish is sombrero. And that's the way we translate. So we do this loop constantly, on and on. So we, we, we think, we listen a word in Spanish or in another language. If we're learning that word, if we're learning that vocabulary, we take that word and then translate the word to our label, to our language, and then we understand, and so on either direction if we're talking or if we're listening and that makes the translation process a poor process for the brain when it comes to communication because our brain is used to um, speed our brain is used to working uh, fast so that translation process coming uh, forth and back translating understanding uh, linking the word which is basically what we do when we learn a second language, uh, that would be pretty much the same 
as for the brain, I mean, for the brain, as if we're talking and I start talking like this. Hey, my name is Mike. And today I would like to talk about you're gonna say hey mike please wake up speak faster you're boring me i'm falling asleep please i need to know what you want to to, to say and that's the the way brain works the thing is because we expose our brain so little to that translation process the brain is not gonna feel uh stressed enough to start linking these labels directly to the concept. So what's the idea? The idea of thinking in a different language, a different than our native uh, language, is to make this process, as to do that process, so many times overwhelm our brains, exposing our brains so much to this process that our brains are going to be tired of doing this process and they're going to start linking those labels directly to the concept. So the next time our brain listens the word uh, sombrero, he's not going to do this this trip. He's got not going to do this linking. He, he immediately is going to link the concept of sombrero, of, of the, 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 the hat, the hat concept that you already uh, have in your mind. And that's the goal. That's where we have to aim for. We need to go uh, to. We need to aim to uh, to to the fact of exposing our brains, overwhelming our brains to the translation process so much that we start linking the words in um, in a different language with our concepts and ideas. That's the basis of thinking in a different language. So right now, how do we achieve that? So I'm going to give you seven tips, seven ways uh, in order for you to learn how to think in Spanish. The first tip is to learn the basic structures. Yeah, I know this is, this is kind of lame. This is kind of uh, boring, but we have to learn the basic structures. Structures in Spanish for, for sentences are pretty much, pretty much the same as structures in English. It's a pattern. It's a pattern that we learn, that we acquire by practicing a lot. And once we learn the, the pattern, we just need to put words on it. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna say an, an affirmative uh, sentence in English, I use subject, verb, and uh, some other information, the complement. So I need, I, I, I think the word is complement. I'm sorry if I, I, I'm using the wrong word. Anyways, I say, I love teaching. So I need a subject, a verb, and uh, the extra information that I have for that sentence. That means that if I learn this, the structure, I just need to start learning words and if I learn the structure and I practice the structure enough, I don't have to think about the structure because at certain point, I'm going to acquire the structure and I'm going to start thinking the structure in that language. So first step, learn the basic structures. Practice the basic structures, affirmative, negative and interrogative questions. I mean, interrogative sentences in the different verbal tenses. Pres simple present, uh, simple future, simple past, and so on. And then we go to the second step, vocabulary. You need to learn words. How to learn words? Well, uh, when I started uh, learning English back in 1983, I was 13 years old. Now I'm 53 years old. I've been learning uh, and studying English for 40 years now. Uh, when I started, back then, I remember the way to learn vocabulary was a list of words. Learn the word by repetition. Yeah, that might work, but there's, there's some di uh, there are different ways to, learning, to learn uh, words and expand your vocabulary. So, one way is choose three words. This is one way to learn vocabulary. Choose three words in Spanish. 
a noun, a verb, and an adjective. Let's say I'm going to choose the word uh, mother. So the word mother in Spanish is madre. I chose the word and I'm going to practice the word throughout my day. So whenever I'm exposed to a situation in which I'm going to say mom or mother, I'm going, instead of that, I'm going to say madre. So I, uh, I'm going to go to my madre's house. That's going to sound weird. And that perhaps if somebody else uh, listens to you, is going to say, hey, oh, you sound like crazy. Why are you smoking? So it doesn't matter. We are learning. And one of the best ways we learn is by exposition to the language, associating and repetition. So that's what we are aiming to, aiming for. Uh, repeating words. So you can either use groups of words, you can uh, use uh, three words or words related uh, to, let's say, things of the house, parts of the body, um, things that I have at my office. Start choosing a group of words every day, at least three, at least three, and repeat those words throughout the day using them instead of your regular English words. And that's going to take you to the next step. And that's going to help you at certain point by repetition, start thinking those words in Spanish. I bet maybe you have heard the, the, the expression, mi casa es tu casa. That's a common word, uh, expression, I mean. And that has the word casa, which is house. And most likely, if you, if you listen to the word casa, you're going to think, oh, that's, you, you, you will know what it is instead of translating. So that's the idea. Repetition of words, vocabulary. The third step is the next step, and it's daily expressions and idioms. Basic expressions and perhaps, depending on your level, uh, advanced idioms. So expressions in Spanish. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. It's so basic. It's so easy. And it's good morning. So from now on, whenever you go to a place and you're going to say good morning, instead of that, say buenos dias. Yeah, you're going to sound maybe weird, crazy, I don't know. But that's part of your daily exposition to the language. And that's the way you're going to start thinking that expression in, in English, in Spanish, and both languages. You're going to acquire that expression. You're going to make that expression yours. The next time you hear buenos dias, you're not going to have to think buenos dias means good morning and translate it in your mind. No, you're going to understand immediately what the expression's uh, meaning. So start by simple expressions. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Me llamo Mike. Uh, ¿Cómo estás tú? Those basic expressions. Use, choose one or two expressions. Repeat the expressions. Repeat the expression. Repeating, associating, and exposing yourself to these expressions on a daily basis. And you can also choose advanced idioms. Idioms like ¿Cómo así? ¿Cómo así? If you're going to translate literally to English, ¿Cómo así? It doesn't make any sense because it would be something like how thus or how uh, that. Uh, that's something weird. Como así is the expression, the, the English idiom, how come. How come means como así. Como así means how come. You eventually will find some idioms that will not be, um, that you cannot translate directly into, into English. But that's another step. Use either uh, basic expressions or advanced idioms in order to repeat and improve your skills. Step four, daily descriptions. Whenever and whatever you are that you're not doing anything. Let's say if you're waiting uh, in line at a bank or if you're uh, commuting on the train, on the bus, anywhere, please try to make descriptions in Spanish. Use the basic structures. We can use basic structures for description. Um, we can use simple present affirm affirmative sentences. So, um, estoy en el tren. I'm on the train. Uh, veo tres personas sentadas. I see three people sitting. Um, 
voy a Nueva York. I, I'm, I go to New York. Uh, estoy tranquilo. I'm calm. Things like that. Describe what you see. Try to describe what you see. Try to describe people. Uh, veo a un hombre alto. I see a tall man. Try to do that every day. That will help you in order to uh, as, um, acquire the structures, acquire vocabulary, and go fluent when it comes to sentence building. Step number five, writing. You need to practice writing in Spanish. And this is even easier than describing out loud because you can take your time. You can sit down, think about what you're going to write, but please try to write either if it's um, basic sentences, if it's a, a, a description, if it's a story, if it's a short essay, start writing in, in, in Spanish. That's going to help you to build confidence and practice a lot the structures. You need to learn the structures for the basic uh, verb tenses and the basic uh, structures, affirmative, negative, and interrogative sentences. Step number six, start chatting with people. Internet is so huge. You can find anywhere places in which in which you can find people uh, to practice with, especially if it's um, uh, Spanish speakers, uh, native Spanish speakers. You can try and say, okay, we can, we, if you're trying to learn English, we can practice half hour or maybe we're going to choose 20 minutes uh, on a chat. Let's chat 10 minutes in Spanish and let's chat 10 minutes, 10 minutes in English. That way, both of you practice. And there is another tool, another resource that you can use, and it's the ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an awesome tool for practicing. And you can use that ChatGPT uh, tool for practicing vocabulary, for practicing uh, sentence structures, for practicing expressions, for practicing um, writing, reading, comprehension, listening, and speaking. And this is going to be another video that I'm going to do shortly in order to uh, give you more tools and resources for practicing Spanish. And step number seven is daily exposition. You need to be exposed on a daily basis to the language. If you want to advance, if you want to learn, if you want to get your skills with a language, with a different language, a second or a third language, you need to ex be exposed to that language on a daily basis. So, read. You can do basic, uh, you can do uh, also um, passive listening. Passive listening is uh, turn on your radio in Spanish, put um, Spanish, music in Spanish, a podcast in Spanish, even if you're not listening to or paying attention to it. Just let it sound. Let your, your, your brain to get used to that sound, to the sound of Spanish, to the sound of words. And you can also... Uh, practice um, active listening, so listening comprehension. Choose a podcast, choose songs, uh, choose news in English. Um, if you have the access to Netflix, uh, Amazon, uh, Hulu, HBO, Prime, any any of those of those uh, platforms, whenever you choose a movie that you like, put the movie in Spanish. Listen to the movie in Spanish. Choose a scene, a scene that you know. Put the scene in Spanish, listen to it, try to understand. Do that exercise a few times with a, with a short scene that you already know. And then, just to make sure, put the Spanish subtitles to start linking the sounds with the words. That's so easy. And that's going to get you exposed more on a daily basis to the language of your choice, which is Spanish. I think if you're watching this video, you want to learn Spanish. So this is the way to be exposed and the seventh, the, the seventh step uh, in order to achieve the uh, Spanish thinking. So those were the seven steps that I wanted to show you uh, that you can uh, take in order to start thinking in Spanish. Uh, what's your, your homework, your assignment? Start trying those seven steps. This is something that you need to do on a daily basis. And 
The only way to achieve your goal is by start working on it. So I hope this is going to be useful for you. Uh, if you like the video, you know what to do. Uh, please share with your friends and groups. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell button. That's going to help you uh, in order to be um, uh, updated with every new video that I'm posting on this channel. And you're also supporting our channel. We're recently starting and we're looking forward to growing and reaching a lot of people who want to learn Spanish. So um, I hope you liked it. And, uh, you know, you have to study, you have to work, you have to uh, commit yourself and commitment, uh, discipline. Um, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's, uh, it's up to you. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the outcome of this depends basically on your work. So uh, looking forward to seeing you on the next, on a next video and have fun, study hard. See you later. Bye bye.